He mapped the human genome about 16 years ago. Today, molecular biology pioneer Dr. Craig Venter is doing amazing work with DNA in part to help people live healthier lives longer, well into their second century. Joining us right now is the co-founder and executive chairman of Human Longevity, the genomics-based health intelligence company, Dr. Craig Venter, along with uh, Congressman Kevin McCarthy this morning. Great to see you, Dr. Venter. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So, first off, I want to go back to what we've learned. So, ever since you mapped the genome, you and your colleagues, almost 20 years ago now, we've learned about heart disease and what causes it. We've learned about smoking and what, where that leads you. We haven't known enough about the brain. What have you learned from the mapping experiment? So, we've learned in the last 15 years almost nothing. And in this next 15 years, it's going to be the most dynamic in medical history. So we're sequencing a genome now every 30 minutes, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The first one cost $100 million and took nine months. Uh, so now we're compiling the, uh, genomes on large numbers of people. But with our clinic, we're getting phenotype and clinical information to go with them. And what we're finding is uh, blowing our minds because we're only dealing with uh, people who think they're healthy. And about 40% of them, we find something seriously wrong with them. One in 40 have cancer. So it means if you're looking at Congress, there's at least 15 or 16 people in Congress that have cancer and don't know it. Mm -hmm. Nationwide, it means there's seven and a half million people that have cancer and don't know it. When we detect it early, every case has been totally curable. And so early detection from our new techniques uh, makes a big difference. So that has implications for the cost of health care. It could uh, uh, kill the cost uh, very rapidly uh, by early detection. That's where the genome comes in. The more we can make predictions from the genome, uh, the more we'll be able to screen people early on. Uh, and prevent diseases from happening instead of treating them after they do. That's exactly true, because as I gave earlier, 1% of those take up over 20% of health care expenditures of the population. 5% take up half. Mm -hmm. But if you're able to diagnose early, cure, the expense is much less. It could save trillions of dollars. Not only does it give you a better quality of life, yeah of what you go through. That's pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Now, you, you started this new company, Human Longevity, um, and Massachusetts Mutual Life Insurance announced a multi-year agreement to offer Human Longevity's uh, a whole genome sequencing. Tell right. us about it. So, uh, life insurance companies get it. Your life insurance company wants you to live a long time. Yes. <laughs> Your health insurance company doesn't give a damn whether you do or not. So our health insurance is really screwed up. But life insurance companies, they win the longer you live. So they're trying to give their clients the information to help them uh, live longer, healthier lives. The, the, uh, the cover story we showed earlier uh, of you saying how to cheat death. Tell me about this. You're doing ongoing work at the clinic. You're doing this physical, $25,000 physical. H how, how do you cheat death? Well... For example, with cancer, we have a new technique in the MRI that cancers light up like a light bulb. Uh, we have five people now where we found high-grade prostate cancer where they had no symptoms and normal PSA. So it doesn't matter what age you are to do this either. It doesn't matter what because age. Because you can... In fact, the earlier you start, if you start in your 20s or 30s, you have a baseline for the rest of your life that you become your own control group and you can measure changes against yourself. So how often should you take the test? So it really depends. So we started this N of 1 uh, study at my institute two years ago with a 16-year-old girl whose younger brother died from a uh, glioblastoma brain tumor. Her genome was sequenced. It was found that she had uh, three or four oncogenes mutated. So she has an extremely high risk for cancer. So we're now, she just uh, started at UCSD. She's going to come and go through the MRI every three months. Uh, we also do some chemical tests. Uh, if we detect cancer at stage zero, uh, it'll be readily treatable. So we know she's at extremely high risk. So if we know you're at high risk from any of the tests, then you come in at a higher frequency. So I lost my father, who's 58, for leomyosarcoma, uh. former cancer, <coughs> which is rare, mo yeah. mostly in children. And so I'm reaching 50. A little be, I'm 52 now. Mm -hmm. So is the timing, I should have already been there, right? Well, we can only extract so much from our parents. So my father died at age 59 from sudden cardiac death. 
My mother is 94 and still alive, uh, mentally intact but pretty weak. Uh, you can't average them and say that's going to be my average lifespan. So each of us is unique. We get a different set of genes from each of our parents and some rare mutations ourselves. What so you got to find out about you. What about the what about the pushback that there's too many false positives with the test? No. I mean, if if you take the test, do you open up a can of worms with with tons of false positives and you start believing that you're sick and you're really not? So that's news from 20 years ago when people started doing CT scans. They would find cysts and things everywhere. The new techniques with the MRI, it's extremely high resolution. Uh, and with this differential imaging technique developed at UCSD, as I said, tumors light up. We don't use any contrast media. Your blood vessels light up. If you have a brain aneurysm, it shows up immediately. So we found several of those. Usually you find them by people die suddenly. So we're moving into this era of preventative medicine mm -hmm. as we can interpret the genome more and more, that would be a good first screen. So that's what we're doing with Mass Mutual. Uh, but it, the best thing is the whole uh, clinic. So we're starting a new clinic called Health Nucleus X, trying to get it so it's faster and much cheaper to let more people do it. So it's seven and a half thousand, and it's the whole genome plus the whole body and brain MRI scan. So you think people will be living into their second century? I think much more will but here's here's the challenge right now if you're between 50 and 74 in the u.s and a male 50 percent of those males will never reach the age of 74 28 percent of women so we have a long way to go in health care right now i mean imagine 40 percent like your father like yeah. my father never saw the age of 74. wow but if so, you diagnose it early if you were able to treat it cost less Higher quality, longer yep. life. Well, what, what about Alzheimer's, though? I mean, if you, if, you, if you live until 85, I think you're one in three chances of getting Alzheimer's, right? Uh, your chances of getting every disease goes up with age. Uh, even Alzheimer's can be prevented. Uh, your cardiovascular system affects whether you get dementia. All these things are interrelated. So we can predict Alzheimer's between the genome and the MRI images of your brain up to 20 years before you have symptoms. So you have a long time to do preventative medicine. And every year the cost will come down lower. And the cost expensive. will come down and all the drugs and clinical trials are preventative drugs. So the key for the future is preventative medicine. The health insurance industry doesn't want to go there. Exactly. Sure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Dr. Venture, it's great to see you today. Uh, we're going to have more with Dr. Venture on Sunday Morning Futures this weekend. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. We appreciate it very much. Craig Venture there. We'll be